Hello and welcome to the Ashley Myths Podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you from Minnesota where I'm finishing up my training as a physician. This is a knitting podcast where I chronicle the knits that I've been working on, uh, mostly so that I can look back and see all of the things that I've done, as well as potentially get to meet some new people. It's been a while since my last podcast. Um, it's been a very crazy month and a half for me. I think last I saw you, it was right before my parents came and then my in-laws came. And then after that, I was doing a traveling rotation. I've been studying for my board exam in anesthesiology and then have been also looking at potential jobs. So I've just had the most hectic uh, past few weeks and I haven't done much knitting. So that being said, I'm glad to be back today. I'm finally done with my presentations and everything that uh, life has thrown at me. So I finally get to get back to the thing that I love, which is knitting. This podcast is going to be very acquisition heavy. So if you're not someone who likes to see new yarn, I completely understand. And next time uh, we see each other, I'll have a lot more to show knitting wise. Um, but it was my birthday at the end of April. And if you've seen any of my prior podcasts, my goal this year is to not buy any yarn. But I took the creative liberty and saying that people who purchased me yarn for gifts didn't count. So I got some yarn. I actually got three sweater quantities worth of yarn uh, to show today and then I may or may not have bought some yarn as well. But again, that doesn't count, right? So yeah, so let's just dive right into the knitting today. I will go through with what I'm wearing. So this is my flom cardigan. It's cold. I'm stuck in the basement again uh, filming. When we move, I hope to have a better place to, to do this. But um, so this is a, I guess, version of the OG um, tank top by Sari Nordlin. Hers is, uh, it was I think in one of the pom pom magazines and hers is cables and then this lace pattern all the way up through the tank top part. It's a little bit longer. I wanted mine cropped. And so what I did was I did the cables and did a single repeat of this fan lace and then just did stockinette through the rest of it um, just because I was nervous with being a little bit bustier that it might look a little bit bulky. Um, so I knit this out of a sock yarn I got somewhere locally. I don't have the tags anymore. I knit it a couple years ago, but in Minnesota, it's been very warm, which is exciting. And I've decided to wear this, but again, now I'm in my basement where I think it's 65 degrees and I'm cold. So I'm gonna put this back on. It didn't take long to knit. I think I did this on a US two and a half, which is I'm pretty sure what she recommends in her pattern. Um, I think I basically knit it within a weekend. I just really liked it. I didn't do any kind of you can see that the yarn itself is variegated. It's this, it's actually picking up very nicely, but it's this kind of burnt reddish orange. Um, I could have alternated skeins or, you know, parts of yarn just to make it look a little bit more blended, but I didn't because it's just a tank top. It was something that I could knit on quickly. I was craving some cables, a little bit more of a complex design and something summery. So that is what I knit. I do wear it not that often, but it's a nice layering piece to have. And since it's been so warm in Minnesota, I get to wear it today. However, like I said, it's cold in here, so I'm covered up in my flom cardigan. If you wanna know more specifically about this, I think I talk about it in my first podcast um, in a little bit more detail about how I knit it. So that is what I'm wearing. I do have two FOs uh, to show you since our last podcast, which, um, I already had the hose done, so now I have a full set of socks. This was basically done when um, I last uh, did a podcast. But this is an earth yarn. It's a self-striping, somewhat variegated. And then this is a just hot pink Stellina um, yarn for heels, toes, and cuffs uh, from, what was it, a Knit Crate that I got a few years ago when I used to subscribe. And it was just fun. They've, I've worn them actually pretty frequently. 
They're very soft. After blocking and washing, they, they softened up quite a bit. So I like these. These are higher than I usually knit them, but uh, ultimately I think they were fun um, just to kind of see the colors. I did my absolute best to make them, <laughs> make them even where you had to pull some of the yarn out, but obviously I missed some of the stripes. So oops, but it's okay. It still looks it still looks good. They're socks and I just wear them around the house. And then I also have another pair to show that are finished, which I showed already one of them. I'm putting them on my sock blocker now so I can kind of show them a little bit better. All right. And then here are some shorties. And this was a pull from the middle of the ball. So I got down to the pink um, after my first sock, realized that I had all of this to knit to get to the matching part um, where the other sock would start. And so I just knit a toe up sock with that color and then did an afterthought heel in a navy. That is a uh, tough sock from La Vienna May that I used for my newspaper sweater. So these went quickly. Um, and it was a kind of a nice easy knit to do and not have to think and get some color in my life when it was still pretty dreary and wintry outside so yeah these are my fo's i was trying to think back if i had anything to show um that i had finished and i was like oh yeah i finished those socks since the last time that i uh, podcasted so that's great all right so moving on to some whips um i'm still working on my mom's sweater if you've seen my last uh podcast and a couple before she uh just to give some backstory um was going through a tough time I offered to knit her a sweater and we spent some time trying to figure out what she liked and we landed on the sweater number nine by my favorite things knitwear and let's see this is how far I've gotten so I have the bottom done and the nice thing is is when she came to visit I uh, had her try it on, was able to measure where um, she wanted it along her waistline. And I did that, um, was able to cast off, um, it's, a, it's a two by one ribbing on the bottom for the pattern. And then I was able to measure her arms. She's a little on the shorter side, so I just wanted to make sure she was happy with the length of the sleeve as well as the, um, the width of the sleeve. So basically when I picked up and I need to mend this hole here that I, I always do that when I, I pick up for the bottom of the sleeve. But when I picked up, I basically measured her arm and I said, well, where, where do you want it? Pinched it and it ended up being the exact amount of stitches that were already on uh, pause on my part part of yarn. So I just decreased the underarm and now I'm basically gonna just leave it as is. I'm not gonna do probably any more decreases I don't think she wants it to be like super tied against her arm. Um, and then I measured her underarm to her wrist where she wanted it. And I didn't have a measuring tape. So I used the TV remote and I measured from one TV remote to a half a TV remote ending at like the menu button. Um, I'm so lazy sometimes, but I think it'll work out well. So that's how long I have left to knit the sleeve. I said in my prior podcast that this has been more of a um, mindless knit for me and I'm not really somebody that likes to knit on just stockinette when I'm not doing anything else and so I've been knitting this while I've been studying which obviously I think last time I didn't have I didn't have the body done I had probably about this much done under the underarm and now I have the ribbing done I am knitting this on a US 10, which is a six millimeter needle. Um, I got gauge on a little bit bigger of a needle, but I dropped down because she wanted a tighter stitch, uh, tighter stitch pattern with the uh, look of it. So I went down and then based on her measurements, this will end up being between a large and a medium size on the pattern, which will work out really well because she was a little bit too small for the large. She wants it to be oversized, but she doesn't want to be too tight. So um, 
I got a picture of her in it and I think it looks really good. She was happy with it. So I'm happy that she is. It's, it's very, very soft yarn. Um, it is this uh, Barocco Vintage Chunky. Um, it is a super wash yarn, um, machine washable. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon. So it stretches really nicely, holds its shape, and it doesn't seem like it's going to pill very much, which um, I know is really important to her, as well as being able to just be machine washable and then just lay it out to dry. So I think that this was a very valued, a value-based yarn, but it's very soft, um, and I really like it. I, I would knit with this again. I'm not somebody who likes to knit with chunky yarn because it just feels different. I, I you know, I'm, I'm very much a, you know, US 4 needle size person. I like fingering weight and sport weight yarn. Um, just my preference. I like the way that it stitches up. You can see the, you know, I like this type of um, material, uh, I guess, fabric. But this was fun and I really do like it. It knits up really fast. I was going on through the body and I was like, oh, this is going to take me, you know, a lot of time. Good thing I have a lot to study. And the next thing I know, she comes in, she tries it on and it's almost to her belt line. And I was like, oh, okay, well that works out. Um, but it's always, it's always surprising how quickly chunky stuff knits up and it was kind of nice to get something done so quickly. But I mean, I have two sleeves to go. I need to finish this. She's not gonna wear it. She lives in Kansas. It's already like 95 degrees there. So she's not gonna wear this until December, but it'll still be nice to get it off my needles and start doing other things. Um, and it'll be a very quick knit. And I think, you know, I haven't watched the new season of Selling Sunset yet. And I might do that while I, I knit on this because I, I think that'll be fun. So I'm doing just a little bit of a decrease here. I'm just doing a knit two together. So just make a nice little line. Um, sometimes I'll do a decrease kind of on both sides and bring it in together, but this one I'm just doing a single side, so there's just a little tiny seam. Um, it, there wasn't very many stitches, and so I don't think that it's gonna be very noticeable. It's gonna look very clean. And um, you can see here, I think it just, it just melded very well into it. So I'm happy with this. I just gotta finish it and uh, get it off my needles and move on to the next thing. It's also what I should say is it's not very heavy, which, you know, I always think about chunky yarn and thinking it's going to be quite heavy and this is actually pretty lightweight. So I think this is a really good project to do if you're a new knitter and you're interested in trying a sweater, I would recommend looking at my favorite things knitwear. This one especially, it's super easy to do. It's a raglan increase and it looks really pretty. It's got just enough design features to make it a little interesting but it's very simple and the pattern itself is very simple to follow. I remember being really nervous to try to knit a sweater because I was like, oh, there's no way that I can do that. And it ends up actually being quite easy. And so when you do, do learn how to do a sweater, it's really fun, especially if you can do it just like, you know, top down in the round, that's the easiest way to do it. I would recommend trying it. And I'm assuming you'll probably get hooked after because that's what happened to me. And now all I knit are sweaters, plus some other stuff. But if I could only knit one thing, it would definitely be sweaters. So that is that. I'm hoping by the next podcast that I do that that's off the needles and it's done. I look ridiculous outside knitting on this, you know, a 90 degree weather while I'm getting a little bit of a suntan. But whatever, you know, knitters are going to knit, right? So that's that. Um, I'm still working on... The Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. She had a March to May knit along um, where you could basically knit any of her patterns. I think it was mostly supposed to be sweaters, but I think you could do whatever you wanted. And there was a big Ravelry group about it. And so at that time I had the Rose Cardigan in my stash, kind of tucked away for a rainy day. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna try to do it. I knew that I wasn't gonna finish this. This is on very, very small needles. I didn't even bring them down here, but I think they're two millimeter needles. Oh, well, that's not right. Two US twos. Um, so it's been going very slow. Last time I had just one of the panels done and then now I've got one of the front panels done. So I have two of the four panels done. This is a front panel um, to match the back panel that I've done. What I think is kind of interesting is, I, I don't know if I miscounted or what, but I feel like 
the front panel is narrower than the back panel. At first I thought, well, it must be, maybe I used the wrong needles, but I didn't. And I could count the stitches and now looking at it, I can tell <laughs> where I went wrong. But I think what I did was I didn't, I counted this extra cable as an extra bit of stitches. And instead I just, didn't count that for this. So all of this is stockinette or reverse stockinette on this one. And then this one is this plus the, plus the, um, uh oh, the cable. I hope that works. I, th I think it will, but I mean, you seam them together. Oof. Oh goodness. If I have to rip this out, that's not going to be good. <laughs> oh no. I'm glad that I'm realizing this now. It's been sitting in my bedroom drying and I haven't picked it up because I've been kind of busy with everything else and didn't think about this. Yikes. So I might have to rip this out because looking at the difference of when you have to seam it together, I don't think it's going to stretch very much. So that's not good. Hopefully, I don't know, I've already blocked it so I don't think it's going to get better than this. Oh dear. This is going to be hard because it's all mohair. Oh gosh, um, and ripping out mohair is so hard. So great. I'm just gonna just put this one on the side, do the other two, and then come back to it and decide what I wanna do. But this is definitely smaller. And I'm glad that I'm realizing it now, but I definitely made an oopsies. And I wonder if I actually made an oopsies on the bigger one, because when I blocked it, it actually blocked out to be a medium and I was knitting a small and so maybe I cast on the medium instead of the small and now I knit the actual small on this other panel and now they look different so great that'll be fun but it's very soft it's a very easy pattern to do it's knit in panels and then you kind of sew them all together knit the borders and then knit the collar um, but it just takes a really long time because you can see here, it's really, really small stitches. It's like I said, on a US two, um, but it's really pretty. This combination of yarn is really soft. It's a um, camel merino and it's combined with a, uh, the Valley fibers or Valley yarns mohair. I actually don't have any of the bands with me cause it's all upstairs, but it, it blends up really nicely. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so the Valley yarn Southampton mohair. Um, again, this was kind of a cheaper purchase, value purchase. I shouldn't say cheap, but value purchase. But I'm happy with it. But now that I'm looking at the discrepancies between these two, I'm not as happy. And oh dear. Don't you love when you find out after you finish that you've screwed up? Especially, especially mohair. I just, it's such a pain in the butt to rip back. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I'm probably just gonna knit the other two panels in the small. I should actually count what the stitches are on this and then figure out which one needs to be ripped out unless I can somehow finagle sewing them all together and making it look okay, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So, oh dear, things happen differently than you expect all the time in knitting. Um, and for some reason you'd think that it'd be easy because it's just counting and you get off and then uh, things kind of go haywire. Um, oh, and I was going to say, just kind of fun, I went, there's a new Joann's Fabrics in town. There was an older one and I guess they moved locations and it's really cool. They have this huge yarn wall and they have a huge yarn setup. And so after my traveling rotation, I went there just to kind of see it before I picked up my daughter from daycare. And I went into their little jewelry section and they had these really cute charms. And they're gardening charms. I have another one on another project I'll show in just a second. But basically they just came with the little um, tiny clip and then I put a little claw clip on the top. And then this way I can have little progress keepers. This is a little um, watering can. How cute is that? And then these are like the little gardening tools. I won't even try to name them because I'm sure people will laugh at me. I'm not a gardener. Um, and then this one's a little flower in a flower pot. Let's see if it'll show. 
anyways, it's, it's, they're so fun. I somehow gotten a little bit more, in, I've gotten more interested in progress keepers. I think they're so cute, like the little clay ones out there. And I ordered, pre-ordered some, which hopefully will be coming here soon and I can show those too, but I thought this was fun. I just, I mean, I did a little bit of, I have a little jewelry kit making things, so I just added the little, um, golly, I'm not good at this, this little extra chain piece and then the little cloth for a progress keeper and I'm very happy with it. So those are a new thing in my stash. Okay, and then I have one more whip to show, which I had not casted on the last time that I talked, but I had mentioned it in my future knits plans. And that is the Tonal Blanket by Pearl Soho. This is a, I think they have a throw version, but this is a baby version. And it's going to go to my sister for her little boy that she's having. I already had all of this in my stash and it's basically just a slip stitch pattern where you put in a contrast color. This one's blue, obviously, and then the white is consistent throughout. It is a super easy pattern to do. It is very mindless, um, but it makes a really pretty pattern. It's almost kind of like a waffle stitch feeling to it. So it's a little rougher, but I think that it, I think it'll look really, really pretty. The people who have already knit it, um, their uh, projects on Ravelry look so pretty. And then this is the backside, which I think is also really pretty. But so this is going to be the first color. And then I think what I'm going to go to next is this color. And then I have a couple other ones in my stash that I have to find. But if you look at my last video, I kind of show the the varig variation of the blues and there's so it's a blue green look and I think it'll look really pretty um and I think she's gonna like it she's due in September so I have time to get it done this is something that I've been doing mindlessly as well I'm doing this on a US 4 this is my favorite needle size this is an uh I think this is an Addy uh needle and yeah I, I think that the yarn is nice it's a Donna Nina, let's see, fine Italian style merino. It's 100% extra fine merino superwash. So um, I've knit things that are not superwash for people, and I think it's really hard for them to kind of abide by the wool <laughs> rules, if you will. So I always said to myself after that, I'm going to always knit people superwash so I don't have to worry about it. My husband has, I think, felted two hats. Um, which one now my, my daughter wears because it's shrunk so much. And, uh, I've just learned my lesson not to do that anymore. Good, good, fine wool for me and super wash for other people. But I think she'll like it. I'm excited. I knit my, um, my niece, my niece on my, my sister's daughter, uh, blanket when she was first born. And then I knit my nephew on my sister, my sister's son, a, Little Giraffe by Susan B. Anderson. And so now I'm knitting another blanket, which I already, like I said, had in my stash, so it's easy to do. And oh yeah, and then here's one of the other ones that came in that little group from Joanne's Fabrics. It's a cute little kind of psychedelic butterfly. Um, so I like that too. And so yeah, it's, it's an easy knit. I think I said in one of my first podcasts that I never wanted to knit a blanket again after knitting the nature's palette blanket because I've knit so many blankets and I get so bored so quickly and I get so frustrated doing them. But yet again, here we are and we're knitting another blanket. Okay. So those are all of my whips right now and all the things that I've been knitting on. Like I said, I have not done nearly as much as I hoped but I got a lot of acquisitions and I'm like, okay, I gotta get through the stuff that I have right now. Or I'm very, very tempted to cast on a sweater. And I probably will because, you know, you gotta kind of celebrate moments in your life and I'm done with my board exam. And so I kind of wanna just celebrate by casting on something new. And that is probably gonna be the Merit sweater. Um, I will pull that up for you. Let's see here. So the Merit sweater is by Kristen Drysdale. It was in a line of magazine that I actually have. Um, let's see here. 
but as you can see it's an all-over color work sweater it's knit in the round and then you steak it um this is obviously a very wintry color but it's got buttons on the front it's a cardigan and i in my prior podcast told you i was craving fair isle and color work sweater so i've gotten the yarn for it so my mom for my birthday um bought me a sweater's quantity worth of yarn so i have for this three colored sweater i have a hair on it my hair gets everywhere um these three colors for it so this is knit picks palette it's a fingering weight yarn um i think it's 100 percent peruvian wool if i remember correctly and uh you know it's very budget friendly i really like that and there's just a ton of colors and I know it works well for color work. I have some already in my stash. I actually have not knitted with it before. But again, I think it's it's a really nice, simple yarn. And it's just really pretty solid colors. So I got for kind of the white background, I have uh, the color Oyster Heather. Um, which is basically kind of like a creamy, milky white. Um, maybe a little bit more kind of tannish with an undertone of beige, I should say. Um, so that's kind of the main color. One of the contrast colors is this, um, kind of looks like baby poop, <laughs> but um, it's the color Serpentine. And it's basically kind of a greenish, brownish yellow. It's a little less gold than what it's popping up on. It comes out a little bit more green, I think. Actually, no, I think that's probably a pretty good color uh, interpretation of it. And then this last one is my favorite, and it's edamame, which I love edamame. Uh, so this is a very edamame color. I think that's a perfect way to describe it, just a pea green. Um, so I think that these three together are going to be really pretty. What I'm trying to figure out is what part is supposed to be what. Um, so obviously, when kind of looking at the sweater, let's see if I can show you here. So obviously the white's gonna be um, the oyster heather, but I can't decide if I want the kind of more fine looking uh, print as being the green or being the brown. What I'm thinking is probably having the lighter color be the brown and then having this color be the a bit more bold looking, they almost look like snowflakes, they probably are snowflakes. Um, but being a bit more of the bold, um, I think that'll make it look more springtime, maybe, but I just need to cast it on. I need to see what they're going to look like as I know that this is going to look a little bit more wintry if this is the bolder pattern. And then this is a little bit of the background contrast color. So I don't know. I, if you have any opinions on which one should be, which if the blue should match the green or if the brown should be the blue, let me know because I don't know what I want to do. And I think it's definitely going to make it look different. And now that I'm looking at it more, maybe I want the green to be the blue. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to just cast it on and decide as I go. But now I'm looking at it again. No, I think I'm going to make the green the, the brown part of the sweater. So clearly I have no direction. I'm just glad that I picked out three colors that I like and we'll go from there. So that is a sweater that my mom got me. I was super excited. They came in town. She brought me this and then she also, as a surprise, got me a new yarn split. So I'm really excited about this. I have one from Amazon that I got that is all uh, metal and plastic and it gets my yarn caught all the time. It does its job, but it's not aesthetically pleasing to look at. So it's not something that I keep out very often. So I'm excited about this. This was a complete and total surprise. I obviously have not used it yet. It's still in its package, um, but this I think will look really pretty. I'm hoping in our next house, I get a craft room or at least some place that I can not have to sit on the floor and, <laughs> and can maybe have some more stuff out. So. I'm really looking forward to this. I was really excited about this. I thought it was so cool that she got me this. And then she also got me a ball winder and it was so sweet of her. I have this already. So 
maybe down the line I'll do a giveaway or figure out what I'm going to do with this guy um, or unless I break mine because I'm pretty uh, an aggressive ball like aggressive winder I feel like I don't know if it's just me but I when I spin it I'm spinning it so fast that sometimes my cake flies off um, so I feel like I put my ball winder through a lot so I might need a new one but if not it's going to be in my stash until I can find a good home for it. So that was really nice. So those were kind of the things that she got me. Um, I was very excited about because who doesn't like getting yarn? I um, decided too at that time that I was really interested in making the, I guess it's called the Bloom Cardigan, um, but it's a Sandisgarn sweater that is an all over two color color work very summery um, design. I have a pattern in English. Um, there's not very many patterns out there from Sandus Garn you can find in English that are available to you online. And this was one of them and I was like, this has to be meant to be. Um, so I got myself my own birthday present, which I usually do buy myself a birthday present. Um, or at least I say it's a birthday present, but I got some Knit Picks palette to make this sweater and I'm really excited about it. I've kind of played around with casting it on but I think I'm going to knit the other sweater first just because there's a little bit more direction with the other sweater and I need to put a little bit more thought into planning for this other sweater because I was reading it and I thought it was a in the round and then you steak but I don't know if it is or isn't. I need long story short, I needed to read again and I didn't have the mental energy to read it thoroughly and figure out what exactly was asked of me. But these are the two colors I'm going to knit it in. I'm going to knit it very similar to that where the flowers are going to be yellow and the background is going to be white um, as long as well as like the collar and the sleeves or the um, cuffs. So this is a different color. It's this cream. So you can see the difference between the cream and the oyster heather. It's very, very subtle, but I think that, I mean, you can you can even pick it up here. You can tell that this has a little bit more of a, a kind of tan undertone. This is definitely more just cream, white. And then the additional color that goes with it is the color cornmeal, which I think is actually the color that they call it in the uh, sweater itself. So I was doing my absolute best to get two colors that looked exactly like that sweater because I think it's so pretty. I am a huge yellow fan and it'll be very summery and pretty. I just have to start to knit it. But I think I'm going to do the other sweater first and then go to this because I'm really excited to steak. I've not steaked before. I have a sewing machine, so I'm thinking I'm going to do like a sewing, um, a sewn uh, reinforcement stitch along the inside. And it could go very, very poorly, um, but I'm excited to do it. So yeah, so those are two sweaters that I'm, I got. And then my husband was like, well, what do you want for, you know, your birthday? And so I convinced him to get me another sweater quantity of stuff. So I have been oogling over the Spot Sweater by Ann Vensel. I think everybody's probably seen it before. It is, again, a kind of Fair Isle colorwork pattern. This is a kind of two-color one. She has one that is multicolored. I wish I could find it. But basically... If you follow her on Instagram and Fencil, you'll see it. I think it was, um, let's see. I think it was featured in a movie or something based on what she was saying. But there are so many different multicolored versions of this. And it's just so stinking, so stinking pretty. Um, so what I did was I got some colors that were similar to the ones that she used and a little unsimilar. So... I thought about doing it just full mohair, but I know myself very well, clearly with the rose cardigan, that there's a high chance that I'm gonna have to rip back, especially with, you know, color work and, oh, hi, Ollie, um, color work and uh, just not following the pattern correctly because I get distracted very easily. Um, hi, buddy, you okay? Um, so, as I just say, I get distracted really easily and I'm talking to my dog. Uh, so anyways, I decided to do a combination. I saw that there were some that were combos. And so I got all sorts of colors. And I again, just 
Nitpix got a lot of my money, or not my money, but I guess my family's money uh, over the course of the past few days or a few weeks. But I basically got all sorts of just really fun, bright color mohair. And they had so many different colors to choose from. So it was a lot of fun for me to kind of just pick out what I liked. There's a white here. I don't even get, get enough. But um, I think that's all the colors I have in the mohair. Yep. So I just have a just crazy amount of ones. And if you see Ann Bensel's kind of multicolored scrap spot sweater, her neckline is this color or similar to it. It's, a, it's like a tangerine. And it's so fun. And what her design, I think, is, is that she starts with very vibrant colors and then she works her way down to kind of finishing on a, a wider, wider light shape. So that's my goal. And so then I, what I did was I got, my daughter got into the yarn, so she's it's all kind of messed up. But then I got some Debbie Bliss uh, Cat Merino DK. And I've never used this yarn before, but it's quite soft. It's 55% wool, 33% acrylic, and 12% cashmere. And I just got it in all sorts of colors. If you have any desire to know what the specific colors are, let me know. I can write them out. But I bought so many different ones just to see how they would work. So I got a little bit darker tones. I thought I got a white one or cream one, but I didn't. So I might buy another one, but I got all sorts of kind of contrasting colors. And my thoughts are that what I'll do is I'll knit, you know, this, this um, color work part in the actual DK and then split these up into three strands and then knit with three strands of mohair alongside with doing this and alternating. So this is gonna be kind of like three strands will equate to a single strand of DK and then this will be the other strand. And so you'll be doing color work with the other two and then just see how it goes. I, you know, it might look atrocious. I don't know. It's gonna be just kind of a fun thing to do. I it was just that night, I was like, oh, I wanna make the spot sweater and I want to make it multicolored and I want to do something similar to hers, but obviously I'm not going to make it exactly like hers. And so I just got all sorts of different colors and we'll see how it goes. Um, but it, I think it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be one of those really fun adventure knits where you just kind of say, yes, I like it. Yes, I don't like it. I'm hoping that it's easier to rip back if I'm doing it um, in combination with a non uh, mohair um, strand. What I'm thinking is too, I mean, a lot of people just do this in non mohair. So that's good to know. But if I really don't think that the combination looks okay, then maybe I'll just switch to just, just all mohair and just do a full mohair one. But as I just said, I know myself very well and I will have to rip back on this probably several times. And if I don't like the color combination, I'm gonna have to rip back on it even more. I could, you know, test it out and see what it would look like on a swatch, but I'd rather live dangerously and see if I like it actually in the sweater. You wanna say hi? You're always right here. Keith's been on in a little bit. He needs a haircut really badly, but he, yeah, you been a good boy. Yes, you have. Can you say hi? <laughs> He's always around. But anyway, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think that's gonna be kind of the fill me up sweater that I'm looking for. Just something colorful, something fun, something I can just kind of throw on and wear around the house and feel, you know, excited about. I um, will probably, when I'm done with fellowship in early July, cast this on and that'll be kind of my time off sweater to knit on. So my goal is I think I'm going to take two months off of work for just kind of just to have some time off and then have a break. Um, and so I'm going to get a lot of knitting done. That's that's the hope. Uh, we will be moving and moving into a new place and, you know, transitioning and I'll have to find daycare for my daughter and all that. But ideally, I'm going to have time to knit on this guy and it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm going to have something really pretty and really colorful to wear. So I'm really, really excited about that one. Okay. So that is the sweaters 
quantities that I got for my birthday. Um, so I made out really <laughs> made out like a fat rat at my birthday and I'm really excited about it. I, I can't wait. So those have been kind of just sitting at me, taunting me in my stash, telling me, come on, we got a knit. But I also went and just kind of was hanging out with my daughter when my husband went to Austin for a weekend and I was single parenting. We went to Hobby Lobby as a crafter and a kid do. And she helped me. She didn't help me, but I like to say she picked us out. Um, we got some novelty yarn. And it's just basically just little strings of sequins. And I got two golds. And this is, let's see, Bejeweled Sequin Gold Yarn B. Um, this is obviously the color gold. Um, and it's really cool. So it's, it's basically just, I don't know what this is. I think it's just polyester. That's what it is. And then, let's see if I can find one of the strands to show you. Um, oh, here's one. But then you can see that probably every six inches on it, there's a sequence. And I've always wanted to knit sequence onto something, maybe on just like the lining of a pocket or maybe even just a sweater with sequence in it. So I'm excited to have those. And my daughter's job was to decide which colors to pick and she picked both. So I have also silver. And we'll see, we'll see how I, where I put it. I don't know, it's one of those things that I've wanted in my stash for a while. I've always thought about beading my knitting as well, but I'm not there yet. And I would rather just try some sequins and see if I like it. And so that'll be something that I'm thinking about. I, I really think it would be cool to do like a really chunky sweater and then put some sequins in there. And so you have just like this tiny little bit of shimmer, but I'm wondering how that would look if you did it every row. I don't know if you'd have to like alternate rows or kind of slip stitch it so that you can, um, not see it as much because I don't also want to look like I'm like a disco ball but I think it's really pretty I'm excited I you know I, I was thinking about eyelash yarn the other day because that's basically all I used when I first learned how to knit I mean novelty yarns were so in what was it 15 oh, I'm gonna date myself was it god it was probably 20 years ago um but I, I used to knit all with that kind of novelty clay yarn and uh, eyelash yarn and that just like feathery yarns and they need to make a comeback because it'd be kind of fun to, to have them again. So I got that with her and then um, I got, let's see here. Um, we went to the farmer's market the other day and it's right across the street from us. So it's really fun. We can just walk my daughter there and she loves being outside probably because she hasn't been able to be outside in like eight months. But, um, we just walked over there the other morning and it's been a while since we've been to the farmer's market and there's a stand, a little stand for a farm called, uh, the berry farm or berry fun yarns. And it is, she hand dyes her yarns. Um, out of just natural things. So this is dyed with yellow onion skins and Saxon blue or indigo. And this is a yak sock. So it's 70% superwash merino, 20% yak and 10% nylon. And she has all sorts of different yarns there. I loved it. She was sitting there, she was knitting on something while she was there and she was wearing a hand knit. And I just told my husband, I was like, I have to support her. This is such a pretty color. And this will make a really, really pretty, you know, tonal sock. And so I'm excited to knit this up. And I just kind of had to get it because I had to support local. And so she's local to um, uh, Minnesota, Rochester specifically. And um, yeah, so, oh, I guess her farm is called Firefly Berries. But I will put her website down in the link below so you can kind of look at all the stuff. She had tons of different multicolored variegated yarns. Um, I just went for more of a semi-solid just because I thought this was such a pretty, and this is picking up really well, it's just a very kind of pretty greenish yellow and I think this will make a really pretty um, maybe a lace sock. So I'm excited to do that and I don't think I'm going to be doing a sock anytime soon. I have plenty of other stuff to do but it'll sit there in my stash and look so pretty and I will be forever remembering the fact that I got this in Minnesota where I lived for five years. So yeah, um, 
that's the last bit of yarn I got. Obviously, I got a ton of yarn, and I feel really blessed about that. I don't usually buy yarn, and this was a lot of fun for me. And like I said, I before I was trying to get my stash down, but that didn't work out, and now I have more yarn. But I'm hoping that now I'm going to be kind of pushing more things through the queue, getting things done, and I'm really looking forward to it. So if you guys made it through that entire podcast, thank you for watching. I don't really have much else to share. It's just been kind of a wild uh, month, like I said at the beginning, and I'm just really happy that it's over and that it's starting to wind down because I'm tired and I'm stressed and... All I really want to do is knit and sleep and have fun and be happy. So I'm looking forward to now not having to study after work every single day and uh, just kind of get back to just being a regular human being. But next podcast, I'm hoping to do maybe this month, the end of it or earlier, depending on how much I get done. I promise next time I'll have more to show, maybe even a new cast on with the merit sweater. Um, but thank you for watching. This is so much fun for me. I really enjoy when you guys reach out to me as well because it makes me very excited and I just enjoy knowing that there's other people watching and that there's other people out there that who love knitting and are, you know, excited to talk to me as well. So have a great week. I hope that the short week after Memorial Day is not too busy for you and that you're enjoying the nice summer weather because I am. Um, and I will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you so much for watching.